As part of the flight planning process, we build a navigation log for use during our flights. We call this dead reckoning and it requires that we determine a series of headings and courses, all of which focus around what we are going over here today. The goal of this presentation is to build a solid understanding on determining true course as a foundation with which we can build upon later. We'll get started by going over what true course is and why we determine it in the first place. Next, we'll take a look at what materials we need to have available so that we can measure a true course. Finally, we'll walk through the process itself using a simple scenario. So what is true course? True course is the course between two points in reference to true north. True north is depicted here and appropriately labeled the North Pole. So in effect, true course is the course in relation to the North Pole. This is where your lines of latitude and longitude reference which will come into play during our scenario in the second half of this video. Also depicted is the magnetic pole, which we can see is not in the same location as the North Pole, but more on that in a moment. For ease of use, maps used for the purposes of flight under visual flight rules are printed with reference to true north, but courses flown are based around instruments which sense the magnetic pole. For this reason, we won't actually fly our true course, but instead use it as a reference number from which to calculate other headings and courses, which eventually reference the magnetic pole for practical use in the aircraft. What these various courses and headings just mentioned come out to be are depicted here. Don't be overwhelmed by the numerous steps. They are very basic once you understand them, and once you can calculate them manually, then you can take advantage of technological shortcuts such as websites and apps, which further speed up the process. So what is it we need to get started? First off, you will need a map. More specifically, you will need a map that is used for the purpose of VFR flight. Generally, pilots flight plan with the use of a VFR sectional chart, which is shown here. Next, you will need a navigation plotter. It is in effect a ruler and a protractor combined into one, and is the protractor aspect that we are most concerned with with regards to true course. In order to write down all of this information, you'll need a pencil. Any writing utensil can be used, but pencils are highly recommended so that you can erase mistakes or any old information, especially if you intend to use the same chart for multiple flights. Lastly, we need a place to write all of this information down. This comes in the form of a navigation log, which I mentioned at the beginning of this lesson. There are nearly endless formats available, and the photo here is just an example. If you have the freedom to do so, try out various formats until you find the one that works best for you. While not required, you may consider the use of highlighter tape. Highlighter tape allows you to quickly identify your route of flight when you're looking at a congested chart, and especially when you're in the airplane and you want to minimize your head's downtime. Now that we know what we need, let's jump into the scenario and determine a true course. Let's say we are planning a flight from South Arkansas Regional to Warren. Highlighted here in yellow are the lines of longitude. Since these lines are in reference to true north, they'll be used to measure our true course. Now that we have drawn our route and found the lines of longitude, we'll need to grab our plotter again. Note that in the center of your plotter there is a small hole. The hole is a reference point and we are going to place it over the intersection of the route and a line of longitude. Any line of longitude will work, but since we have already got one going through the center of our course, that will be the easiest. With the small hole held over the intersection of the two lines, rotate the plotter so that it is parallel to the course shown. We need to read the heading at the top of the plotter, so let's focus here. Note there are two sets of reference numbers on the scale where the line of longitude intersects the plotter. The top set is 060 and 240, while the bottom set is 330 and 150. We'll use the top set of numbers for now, and we'll come back to the bottom set later. What we're really paying attention to here is exactly where the line of longitude is located against the plotter. It appears to be either 061 or 241, but that's still two numbers, so which is it? Remember earlier when we made note that we were heading generally in a northeasterly direction. First, referencing the compass rows to the right, we can see that only one number, be it 061 or 241, makes sense if we are heading in a northeasterly direction. It is clear to see here that our true course is in fact 061 degrees. So why are there two sets of numbers on the compass rows? Depending on the direction of your course, you may not be able to measure the route against the line of longitude. 
Imagine if your route was entirely north and south and it did not intersect a line of longitude. We would use a line of latitude in that case, which we have depicted here on the left, and we would reference the lower set of numbers. We would still need to make note of which cardinal direction we are intending to travel so that we choose the correct number. Another factor to consider is that not all plotters are going to be the same. Some may have two sets of numbers, others may not. Others may have arrows to indicate which number to look at based on the direction of flight. No matter the layout, it's important to remember which direction we are traveling so that we can rule out the bad number or numbers on our plotter. True course is just the beginning. It is the foundation from which all flight planning will build, and although our example was a direct route between two airports, it can just as easily be between two checkpoints on a longer route. In that case, you would need to measure true course for each leg of the route. The next presentation will demonstrate how we calculate true heading, building upon everything we just talked about here. Constructive feedback is always welcome, and if you would like a copy of the material, then you'll find that in the link in the comments below. Additionally, if you are looking for any of the required materials, such as maps or plotters mentioned toward the beginning of this presentation, then you will find them in the comments as well. Thank you, and safe flight.